Well, hello and welcome back to the channel. A few months ago, I finished the main part of the build for my first ever back garden observatory. You might have seen the video that detailed how it was constructed. Today, I'm going to take you into the observatory and show you some of the finishing touches that I've made to it, some of the modifications I've had to make to it, and crucially, what kit I've now got installed within it. So, look forward to bringing you along. So, in case you didn't see the first video, the observatory is based on a modified plastic Kita six foot by eight foot shed, very similar to the design uh, which Astro bloke Glenn published on his YouTube channel. And I strongly recommend you take a look at the Astro bloke YouTube channel for a more in-depth guide of how to build one of these. So the first thing that is obviously different compared to the last video is I've now installed a telescope in here. So I've got a Skywatcher Quattro 8S, which is a, uh, it's a Newtonian telescope, so it's a telescope with mirrors. Um, it's a 205 millimeter aperture F4, so 800 millimeter focal length uh, Newtonian. It's designed really for astrophotography rather than uh, visual use. It can be used for visual, but really it's core purposes for astrophotography. And that is sitting on uh, a Skywatcher EQ6R Pro SynScan go-to mount, um, more than robust enough for the telescope. Um, and um, I'll show you how I've mounted that on the floor in just a second. So, so you might remember from last time we spoke um, that I was weighing up between uh, getting a visual telescope in here, so something like a big Dobsonian um, or a scope more suited to imaging. So I'm completely new to imaging astrophotography. I do uh, landscape astrophotography, so nightscapes, which just involves a camera tripod, maybe a star tracker or something like that. Um, deep sky astrophotography is completely new to me. Um, it's something I've always thought about doing, but I think some of the, um, uh, the the learning curve, some of the complexities of it, some of the frustrations I hear people have has sort of put me off until now. Um, meanwhile, I've been a visual observer for well over 30 years, so basically since I was about 11 years old. Um, I have never had to run out an extension cable at night, I've never run out of power because everything I've done has been purely manual, just with me, uh, a telescope um, and you know, a really good star atlas. Um, but I quite fancied trying something different and um, specifically with this observatory, um, if I had a Dobsonia in here, I'd struggle to get particularly low on the horizon um, and I think that would limit what I'd be able to do with it. So um, I might still at some point get another big Dobsonian, but for now um, I have gone down the imaging route with this Skywatcher Quattro 8S. So I needed to work out once uh, I bought the EQ6R Pro um, how it was going to be uh, um, located in the observatory. Uh, this floor that the Kita shed comes with um, is quite flimsy. I mean, it's fine if you're using it as a normal shed, but to mount a telescope on it, um, it's really got far too much flex when you move about. Um, the telescope image would move all over the place. Uh, so I had two options, really. The first would have been to construct a concrete pillar, which would have gone through the floor and uh, through the gravel base that I've made below and maybe dropped a couple of feet down into the ground. Um, that would have been pretty hard work. Um, I would have had to have removed the gravel, well, I'd have had to remove the shed and the floor and the gravel base, dug down and basically reconstructed the observatory. Uh, I had absolutely no inclination to do that whatsoever. So the gravel base underneath this plastic floor is quite sturdy. Um, so I simply drilled um, three large holes big enough for the tripod legs in here um, and the tripod simply sits uh, well, the tripod legs go through the uh, plastic um, uh, floor and straight onto the gravel bed underneath which is perfectly solid. It also means that the plastic floor isn't touching the tripod legs which means I can move around them here and providing I'm not you know jumping about doing the can-can that sort of thing um, it doesn't pass any vibration onto the telescope itself. So that's a really effective option. 
Uh, I'm fully expecting, uh, you know, slugs and things like that to probably find their way up through those holes. But relative to having to deconstruct the whole observatory, that is a minor inconvenience. Because I've got the telescope mount, cameras, laptops, all that sort of thing to power, um, I've had a power board here um, professionally installed. I ran an armoured cable from a spur we've got on the edge of the house uh, around the garden, and then I had someone professional uh, come and install the board itself um, and wire it up at either side. Um, and uh, I've also installed some sort of relatively low level uh, red LED lighting, which uh, sort of runs underneath the, uh, the, the frame there. That just creates a nice ambient um, uh, lighting in here at night. Doesn't really alter my night vision very much either. So I'll just give you a quick tour of the telescope rig. Um, so the EQ6R Pro here, which I bought from First Light Optics in the UK, um, fantastic service as ever, um, is powered by a, a Nevada uh, regulated DC power supply there. Um, don't uh, judge my cable management. I've basically just got the cables from that uh, twisted around the leg with um, enough freedom in that cable so that the mount can slew around where it needs to. Um, you'll note I've not got the hand controller in. That's a relatively new change for me. Uh, initially I had the hand controller. I've got to say um, that for such brilliant products elsewhere, uh, the Skywatcher, SinScan hand controllers um, are just so poorly designed in my view. The fact that they won't store critical information like time and date is just confounding, completely beyond belief. Um, <clears throat> so instead, I control the mount via a direct USB connection uh, from the laptop over there. I use a combination of um, Astro Photography Tools, APT, um, and then uh, a, an interface application called EQ Mod, which interfaces between the mount and Astro Photography Tools. Um, I also use an application called Cart to CL, which is a uh, effectively a star map application, which also allows me to control the telescope from there. Um, the uh, Quattro 8S sits on a pretty chunky Losmandy plate here, again purchased from First Light optics um, I've got so I bought the uh, the telescope this uh, this Quattro 8s uh, second hand from a guy in Northampton um, it already had installed on it this beautiful by the planetarium uh, focuser which is so uh, secure and smooth um, it's just a joy to use uh, the guy who had the telescope before me got a load of 3d parts printers try to um, eliminate any kind of light leakage in the telescope. So um, even to the extent where down at the bottom end here, um, he's 3D printed effectively an end cap for the telescope, uh, which just makes sure that there's no risk of, um, uh, of any light leaking in at any point. Um, I've put uh, a juice strap around the primary here, just a Lynx Astro uh, juice strap, again from First Light Optics, designed for an eight inch um, a tube diameter, um, or radius rather, no, diameter, that's right. Um, and I also, if you can see at the top here, um, have a dew strip uh, on the primary there. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so the scope itself came pretty well um, equipped for a lot of this. That's the cable for the secondary uh, dew strap. I've got around the other side here, a high-tech um, high tech Astro um, Dew uh, controller. That's a two channel Dew controller with um, uh, both the primary and secondary Dew straps controlled from there. They are powered as well from that DC power supply that I showed you earlier. So to be completely honest, I found uh, the electronics in the uh, EQ6R Pro uh, a little bit complicated to set up. I had some quite some challenges trying to get alignment working. It's the first time I've really had to do accurate polar alignment and that sort of thing. But one of the coolest things when you get all of that sorted out about a go-to mount is just being able to select the object you want to look at and do this.
I literally never get bored of doing that. And in case you're wondering, yes, I do come out here during the day and sit here. And even if it's rainy outside or cloudy or daylight like it is now, I just slew to something just to pretend I'm out there capturing some images under the night sky. It's just uh, fantastic fun. Um, so right now, um, uh, that alignment is typically pretty good. I normally get the object I'm looking for certainly within you know a decent margin of the center of my field. Um, I have just downloaded the uh, databases and applications to do plate solving through Astro Photography Tools. Um, that'll be something that I try out in the next uh, clear night. Um, to me, it all feels a bit like witchcraft. If it works, it's gonna be absolutely amazing, and game changing to uh, my Astro Photography. So looking forward to giving that uh, a go. So what's worked well? Um, First of all, and probably most importantly, uh, the weather ceiling has actually been uh, pretty good. So um, about two weeks after I finished constructing it, we had the fiercest storms I've ever seen in this part of the world. We had um, days or a day with gusts that exceeded 85 miles per hour. This uh, location for the observatory is pretty exposed to those gusts coming from the southwest as they were. Um, and I admit I was very nervous indeed, but the observatory was completely unscathed. Um, I was quite nervous the roof was going to start trying to take off as the uh, the wind would sort of get underneath the um, uh, where the roof sits on top of the walls here. But that didn't happen at all. So I was very grateful uh, for that, which is which is fantastic. It means I don't have to worry when you know we regularly get you know, storms with, with gusts of sort of 40, 50 miles an hour. So if it can take 85, it can probably uh, put up with quite a bit. Um, Water-wise, it's also done pretty well. So um, I uh, did have, you know, some uh, on top of the walls here, there are some channels uh, which would sort of fill with water over time. Um, I've managed to deal with those by simply drilling a hole uh, on the other side of the cavity on the outside of the wall so now it can just drain straight out. Um, I would never really have any leakages in here or anything like that. Sometimes at the foot of the door just here, um, then if it really rains or is, is really sort of, uh, you know, a howling gale and, and, and sideways rain and that sort of thing, um, I might see a sort of damp patch on the floor, but nothing that worries me from having electrical kit out here or indeed this mount out here. So I'm pretty pleased with the way this thing so far has held up to uh, the elements. During the day, during days like today, it gets quite warm in here. I might look at some sort of ventilation, uh, you know, like a solar powered extractor fan or something like that to, to put on here just to help draw the air through. Um, although, you know, there's a pretty decent gap here between the wall and the, uh, the roof and that lets in a bit of air. So actually there's a bit of air circulation uh, anyway. Um, Condensation uh, doesn't happen unless I have the roof off. If I have the roof off for a night's imaging, uh, it can get very dewy. We just come through spring here. It's been quite dewy at night. Uh, but during the next day, you know, it warms up enough that everything evaporates, dries out. So far, been absolutely fine. One change I did find I had to make was to the height of the roof assembly above the walls. So initially, uh, after I built it, the, the, the roof slid off on these rails uh, really simply. Um, what I did find is after uh, a couple of months, the roof assembly must have started sagging a little bit or something, whether it's because as it warmed up or some, something, you know, changed size, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but I found that the roof would keep uh, snagging on bits of the wall as it was sliding off. So um, that was annoying me, to be honest. I had to basically just lift the roof over those snags all the time. It sort of defeated the object of having the rails. So what I've done, and this is a temporary fix for now, is I've just lifted the rails up by maybe three quarters of an inch, something like that. It's not especially secure there, but I will be securing it a bit better uh, later on. And that's now just lifted the whole roof assembly up enough that it just doesn't catch on the wall anymore in fact it's a breeze to slide on and off um hasn't materially or at all altered the weather ceiling of it either i don't have any problem with water coming in um, so that was definitely a worthwhile um, problem to go out and fix so you might also have spotted that strange camera above my head there um, that is one of the cameras for the uk meteor observers network um, it's not yet 
wired in, I need to uh, program or get the applications for the Raspberry Pi that will power it. Um, <clears throat> but the idea of that is it will constantly monitor the sky in a certain direction um, and will help with the identification of meteors. It was that network that helped to locate the uh, Winchcombe meteorite landing in the UK at the beginning of 2021. Uh, so it's nice to be able to uh, contribute to that group, hopefully very shortly. Um, I've also managed to find a part of the sky which doesn't appear to be covered um, by that particular network at the moment. So I'm looking forward to uh, helping to contribute to that. Uh, ultimately, I think it'd be quite nice to have one of those pointing uh, in each direction. Uh, I have told my neighbours what it's for, so hopefully they're not too concerned that it looks like I'm setting up a small sort of prison camp here or something. And then finally, completely unrelated but adjacent to the observatory, uh, we had the windows in our house replaced recently and in uh, as part of the DIY frenzy that I was in building the observatory, I decided to build for my wife here uh, a potting shed. Um, so it's quite nice. We can come down from the house into our own little bits at the end of the garden. We haven't built a window between there yet so we can chat to each other. Um, but it's quite nice having our own little sort of little tykes playhouses down here that we can uh, each be in together. In terms of what my horizons look like, um, north is that way. So uh, it's not a bad uh, horizon. That hedge there, you can see the top of that beach. Uh, is ours that will be cut a bit uh, next year so end of this year rather so that will get a bit better um, as I go around to the northeast it's not uh, it's not so bad over there um, east is definitely my worst uh, um, orientation so that's a tree in the middle of our garden um, it's a beautiful tree no way I'm going to take it down or anything like that but unfortunately it means I don't get to objects particularly early in the year so it's uh, late spring now early summer um, haven't yet been able to image uh, the Cygnus region or anything like that because it's uh, you know too low down from there. <clears throat> um, the top of my wife's potting shed um, does take some of the view off there but that's quite low down that's not really going to cause me any problems. Really for me the sweet spot is the south um, and then as I go around to the southwest that's all pretty decent too. And then I do get clipped a bit uh, towards the west or west northwest uh, by the top of the observatory there. But um, it's um, it's not bad. I think there's definitely a lot of usable sky that I've got there. So I'm pretty happy with my lot. So that's uh, it for the update. Um, if you are thinking about building yourself uh, an observatory, just do it. Um, if you've got the space. Uh, in your garden. Um, it's a really fun project to get involved in. For me, it was quite challenging. I'm not very DIY savvy. Uh, so if I can hack together something like this, I'm very certain uh, that anybody can. Um, it's the sort of project I'll keep tweaking, I'll keep tinkering with. Um, I'm sure there'll be elements that frustrate me over time that I'll be able to fix, but I've really enjoyed doing it. I love the fact that at the end of the garden now, I can go out and um, you know, be already set up to do some imaging. It's a completely new side of the hobby for me, something I'm learning to do all the time. It's definitely got its frustrations, definitely got its challenges, but um, we don't, you know, come into this hobby for an easy life, particularly when you live in the UK with the clouds that we often have here. So um, I hope that's been informative. Um, if you've got any questions at all, um, don't hesitate to uh, either drop me a DM uh, find me on Twitter or just put something in the comments here uh, and I'll respond and hopefully help. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for watching if you got this far and um, no doubt chat to you soon. Cheers.